Hello everybody. Um and I hope you have a great Saturday. This is the first Saturday of the month, so we are going to have a, a the monthly chat. I want to warn you to start with that if you see one of my teeth that is darker than the other one is that I'm still waiting for a material to be shipped because last time when Finnegan was hospitalized, I have this very bad habit and I don't do it consciously. Uh, whenever I'm very stressed, I start clenching my jaws and I managed to clench my jaws so bad that I practically cracked the veneer because I have bridges up and down and I cracked the veneer on one of my teeth so it's on the bridge practically hi Donna so it's still the background of the metal bridge that that is kind of dark so it's no veneer I'm not some kind of hillbilly <laughs> with dark teeth I mean I have dark teeth, but I'm not a hillbilly. Yes, and I have a Connor here who wants attention. Uh, so what has been going on? As you know, November was again a month for me that was full of... Why am I having this here? Full of all kinds of bad things. This time it was with Finnegan who had really bad... Um, urinary tract problems he got urinary obstruction because he had crystals in his bladder because of only wanting to eat one food one cat food that was very high in phosphorus so at this moment uh, hopefully because he's hi Krista hi Darla because what happens, the type of crystals that he had uh, usually form when the um, cats, uh, number one, don't eat enough wet food and don't get enough water, which was not the case for him. And number two, get too much phosphorus in their diet. And unfortunately, the food... Okay, you want to be shown out of... I have somebody who wants attention. That is not Finnegan. Hi, Ascara. Hello. You just want some attention. Yes. Yes, I love you too. Um, and their urine becomes too alkaline. And that can happen especially with uh, cat foods that have too much plant material in it. You know, like grains and corn, but not only. They m it might be that they have too much, those all those healthy foods for cats that are grain-free. But they do have too much sweet potato or too much peas and all kinds of stuff. Hi, Judith. Um, anyway, so his urine pH, the normal u urine pH healthy for cats is between 6 and 6.6. 6. And when he had the first obstruction because he had little struvite crystals that were obstructing his little urethra. When he had his first obstru obstruction, his pH was 8. And then when he had the second obstruction and he was in the ER vet, his pH was 7, and that was within 12 days. And uh, he started exhibiting the same things day before yesterday I had a little bit of one of the medications from when he was last hospitalized uh, that is an antispastic and would help him you know pass whatever it was and then yesterday I went again to an ER, ER a vet with him but what it showed fortunately that all those uh, symptoms he was having the day before was because probably he expelled the very last crystal because they did an ultrasound and his bladder was free of crystals of everything he did have uh, irritation on his urethra showing that something was there that caused a lot of issues 
but all in all, there was no infection. He came home with two medications to help with the spasticity and with the inflammation. Now, the other thing that I have to tackle right now is that, and I was afraid he might do that, because cats, when they start having pain, peen, or pooping, or whatever, they start associating the uh, litter box with pain. So they might start peeing around the house. And I caught him twice. He didn't manage to do it, but I caught him, you know, starting it. So I'm gonna have to get a new litter box and put it in another place in the house and use a different litter than in the other one. So nothing would be, you know, triggering that association with pain in his little brain but otherwise he's not doing bad at all he's drinking he's playing he's eating of course he's very persnickety when it comes to food because that was the main problem with him not wanting to eat anything but his very high phosphorus food but now he's eating only uh, tuna puree out of tubes, you know, I, I don't know if you've seen um, those uh, videos, Japanese videos with cats, where uh, they let them lick out of, <laughs> out of, um, I'm trying to find the video, give me just a minute, that they messed up so bad. Um, Facebook that I can barely use it. It hurts my eyes. It gives me headaches. It's hard to find anything. Okay. Let me... Come on. And now you cannot get the video link anymore. Okay. There we go. If you want him to see him eating that tuna puree, here's the link to the video I posted on Facebook. Uh, he's just absolutely adorable <laughs> when he does that. He's something else. Anyway, so yeah, I had again, uh, for example, in the last two days, today wasn't that bad, but yesterday and the day before, I practically wasted the day because every five minutes I had to get up and go with him because he kept trying to, to pee every five minutes and go and check if he did pee or not to see if I need to take him to the <laughs> vet or not. Hi, Chris. Anyway, um, the good part is that uh, yesterday the because they have like three emergency services in the city and uh, last time when he was in the ER the other t two ERs did not have a doctor who could catheterize him so I had to go to practically the most expensive one and the bad part is that that one the most expensive one doesn't accept any kind of you know credit care, scratch pay, nothing. It's only cash down or we don't care if your pet dies. But uh, yesterday, fortunately, one of the other ones who does take scratch pay uh, was in the facility, so I was able to take him there. Uh, I do want to do one more thing for him just to be on the on the safe side you know, to know that I don't have any other issues with him. Uh, Persian cats are prone to have a genetically transmitted disease. It's called polycystic kidney disease. And the uh, minuets being practically the breed being obtained by selective breeding between the Persian and the munchkins may inherit that. Now I know that uh, his parents did not have it, but I would really like to have him genetically tested 
And if you ask why don't you just do an ultrasound, it's because to genetically test him it's about a quarter of the price of an ultrasound for the kidneys. So <laughs> I'd rather first see if that could be the case or not, you know, because it might not. Hi Toots. Hi Colleen. So, and I will bring him here in a little bit. He's sleeping somewhere. I don't know where he is. And he's going to get his tuna puree soon. Anyway, let's get back to polymer clay. Have I been working on something? Yes, here and there I did manage to work on a little bit of stuff this week, but I didn't manage to finish anything because I'm telling you it's like I am cursed every time I'm starting to catch up on some on stuff something happens so anyway let's get back on polymer clay and other things for Christmas and I'm going to tell you I'm going to respond as I said before uh, there are some questions that I get in messages either on YouTube, either on Facebook, either on people emailing me, that I'd rather respond on live because these might be uh, questions that are of a wider uh, importance. You know, more people might want to know about it. So, the first, hi Judy. The first question is, what would be the best materials to make uh, Christmas and generally winter jewelry and decorations? And I think that here the, the lady was referring mostly to obviously polymer clay, uh, what kind and uh, what it is very important to keep in mind when you're doing stuff for Christmas your and for winter is just half of that but for Christmas your best bet is to keep in mind that specifically for Christmas you do have hi Cindy you do have some color combinations and the main color combination would be red and green. Now, of course, there is a certain red and then there is a certain green. When it comes to uh, Primo, regular Primo, not metallic, not nothing. Uh, but when it comes to Primo, your best bet obviously is give me just a second is um, the former jungle and I do have uh, I do have a recipe for that that involves regular green it involves black and it involves ultramarine I'll have to uh, once again I don't have it at hand all I have to put it somewhere to have it always available for me <laughs> but uh, I always forget um, because the primo jungle is not produced anymore why they decided to take it out when it's so used I have no idea but uh, would be the the primo jungle then the primo pomegranate and then the combination color for these two would be gold can you add another color to these two for christmas yes you can but it not it's not going to look as good i mean you can add silver you can add uh, white pearl but it's not going to look as rich as gold uh, also from Primo um, I did test those new metallics and yes the red and the green give beautiful 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 effects especially for uh, Christmas stuff and yes you can combine the let me see where I did it this will be a 
I'm going to show you. It's a bracelet. And that's going to be first put up for my uh, sponsors and then a week later it's going. I'm still working. Normally I shouldn't have more than about an hour and a half to work on the tutorial but because of things happening uh, didn't happen yet. But I can show you See, this is with the new metallic red and green Primo and then with the regular 18 karat gold but as you can see it is yeah that's what I did too I stock up stocked up on jungle I still have I think like at least 15 two ounce packages of jungle <laughs> But yeah, I fully, fully recommend it. Um, I'm not sure. Let me check if Trish got it in yet. Because last time I checked, it wasn't. guess not not yet she didn't get them yet I got mine from uh, scalpy dot com just to be able to test them out before uh, a Trish gets them I didn't even look for them on Amazon because for some reason all the polymer clay sellers on Amazon except for the Chinese crappy polymer clay they super overprice stuff I mean seriously you shouldn't pay more than I mean seven or eight or ten dollars for a two ounce package of Primo it's a little bit too much so um, yes i fully fully recommend them the second winter a combination would be pearl and blue now there is a blue in the new metallic colors let me show it again so there is a blue that is way more blue than the former peacock but uh, you're going to ask so what do I do if I do not have the new metallics well if you do not have the new metallics what you do you have two two choices you can get um, white pearl and then depending on how dark you want it to be use anywhere from remember that when you're uh, cutting cut all the clay have all the clay of all the colors on the same thickness and uh, use the same cutter it doesn't matter if it's round it doesn't matter if it's squared it doesn't matter of the shape of it as long as you use the same cutter and that helps you when you have to to make small amounts of mixes because you can use a tiny cutter or you can use a large cutter depending if you have to do just a small small amount of a color then you can use tiny cutters and you still keep the one part of this and two parts of this uh, so you can start with the uh, four parts of uh, white pearl primo and half a part of ultramarine and you can go pretty much all the way up to one and a half parts of ultramarine for four parts of uh, white pearl but don't go higher than that because it's going to mute the mica so you won't get as many and your other variant uh, and you can also you can add a little bit of translucent to keep more uh, because the, the ultramarine is opa opaque so it's going to mute a little bit so add equal quantities of translucent as you add ultramarine so let's say if you go with a quarter uh, uh, half a 
part of ultramarine for four parts of uh, white pearl, add half a part of translucent as well. If you go for um, one part of ultramarine for four parts of white pearl, add one part of translucent as well. So, uh, the second way of making a good uh, blue is if you have peacock, then you can simply use about three parts peacock, one part ultramarine, one part translucent. Again, ev every time you mix an opaque clay, opaque colored clay, regular clay, into a, a mica pearlescent metallic clay, always add the same amount of translucent otherwise it will opacify and all your mica shift effects all your everything is going to be way muted and why does that happen because a metallic clay practically is nothing else but translucent clay with mica particles in it some of the translucents also have a little bit of uh, pigment powder but, and the third way to make any color of pearlescent uh, metallic you want is um, to simply mix mica uh, powder into translucent polymer clay. Um, you have to be aware though that you're going to need a little bit of clay softener because as you add the powder to the clay, it's going to be stiffening the clay a little bit and you need more um, softener to make it uh, properly workable and don't add too much generally the way that I measure is by a loaded exacto knife blade and that loaded means that I grab as much as I can from it and it's going to be loaded you know it's going to have a how much I can get and that would be for about three, you know, the the square, the square cutter, the simplest cutter from uh, the from Primo Sculpey, the one that's one and a half inches in side, three translucent on the thickest setting, for one loaded exacto blade of mica powder if you add less it's going to be, be less showy but your depth effects will be more significantly um, more noticeable but if you put too much mica powder you're going, going to start losing because you don't have as much free space between the mica particles so that it would show all the depth and everything they're going to be just too packed in there um all right so let me see uh, another thing that you can use for christmas and so keep in mind the colors okay uh if you go for female professional fem for female female professional is the best um, as pure colors and here you have the pure um, red and that is the best the professional primary color red and then the best green to use for uh, what you call it for uh, hold on I need to see better here how it's called because it's not the regular green it's kind of like a combination like kind of like the jungle but for female is a okay this is not a good one then Stadler practically gives you the um, the chart on how to do stuff using because with female professional you only need the primaries and you can make any color out of them you don't have to 
do anything, but I'm I still I'm trying to find the legend on the colors. How they are called. I'm sorry, I thought I already had the the stuff, but it was a different a different page on the website, not the one that I needed. And this one doesn't want to load. Okay, so that would be the uh, one that's called 1K. And it still doesn't show me. Just I'm trying to find all the colors. Not just the mixing recipe. God. It's just you cannot find the proper information anymore. Okay, it's called Leaf Green. Alright, that's the one that you want for Christmas and it looks like this. This is the one that you want, that works the best. You can, if you want, use the true green, but if you want to not have to work on mixes, go ahead and use this one. Okay, when it comes to Cernit, what colors you want, you want the you can work of course with the opaline if you want but just go with the to go with the regular colors and let me let's show again the display i normally get my cernit from clayfactory.net that is owned by the artist marisa gall and uh, it's uh, an absolutely wonderful. She's right now out of stock uh, on a lot of stuff, but uh, I know she's getting new stuff. I ordered the new Cernit Metallics. So you want the red, but you want the carmine too, and just mix the red with the carmine in equal parts. Or you can get the Bordeaux. She doesn't have the Bordeaux, so your chances are with the carmine and the red. And then and they do have a Christmas red in the Cernit line, but in my experience, the Christmas red is too boom and it's too red. It doesn't have that poinsettia kind of Santa thingy. Okay, and you want the emerald green. You can use a little bit of the olive green to mix with the emerald green, but the emerald green is the closest that you can get in the Cernit line. So, as I said, you can go with the... Okay, mm, bye. So these would be the, the main colors you want to use for Christmas. Oh, of course you can use a whole bunch of resins and do all kinds of resin stuff. Now remember, if you want to do colored resin and um, one of the things that are very, very, very important give me just a minute so I can give you the example because I have in uh, the influencer store in the influencer store if you've never been to my influ influencer store and I'm going to put the link in the live stream here remember I do not sell any of these myself it's just that whenever people buy stuff on Amazon either from my influencer store or going to Amazon through my influencer store I do get a few cents commission and it adds up 
So I did have to add a Finnegan thing <laughs> and the COVID-19 by general demand. But as you can see, I have the influencer store quite uh, nicely organized. And if we go to resin, I, I, I go through it pretty much weekly because uh, sometimes it changes. Uh, some things aren't available anymore some things are but if you see in the beginning of the resin uh, section I have resins first and there would be the casting resins and then would be and in the casting resins I have some um, um, urethane some polyester and some fiberglass uh, resin and then are the UV resins and uh, this is some resin that's already colored but the main thing that you need to remember if it is a UV resin here are all kinds of resin pigments colors to color your resin if you're using UV resin you need your pigment to be transparent as you can see on these ones they are transparent resin dye. Uh, it's true that this one says it's for polyester, but I used it with great success to regular UV resin without a problem. Um, because when the pigment, like when you see these Chinese things, one thing that tells you, because they might say that they are for UV resin. Uh, see, this, these ones are honest. They say AB resin right but some of them are not always honest let's see what do these guys say these ones don't say anything just epoxy but a lot of the chinese sellers they would say see this one says uv resin so this is not true these are not uv resin colors because the uv resin colors are always in dark bottles and it's very simple why are they always in dark bottles because it's actually a transparent pigment uh, mixed in some UV resin so if it's not in a dark bottle it's going to cure even if slowly from the the, the light going through the bottle but it's going to cure and that's the, the main reason why you want a translucent uh, resin because if it is not transparent then what is going to happen is that the light will not go through it through the microscopic particles of pigment and your UV resin is never going to cure so yes you can color resin but be very careful of the type of pigment you use the same all kinds of um, um, inclusions that you might use i had no problem using and i've made several videos with that using interference mica powders because they are transparent uh, using ice crystal uh, flags and you see I have here all kinds of other instruments to to use with resins I normally use the uh, syringes disposable syringes and if I need more I guess I need to get uh, some new ones if I need more precision than I use there are these little blunt tipped needles and then all kinds of molds and things but when we get to the inclusions because I have a whole bunch of all kinds of inclusions you can put in resin very careful what you're choosing because for example uh, inclusions like these itty bitty actual seashells you'll have to turn that UV piece on all sides to make sure that it's all the way cured otherwise you're gonna have to have or you're going to find out that you have little um, uncured soft spots these little 
jellyfish they are transparent i tested them they allow curing so whenever you put stuff in it you have to make sure that it is proper any of the metal powders do not mix them in uv mix them only in cast resin um, the dichroic films angelina films uh, and even these uh, marblers they will allow uh, depending on the the color anything that you see a light color mica it's going to allow the the light go through the uv resin but anything that is a little bit darker i mean there are colors and colors so unless you are already very very familiar with this kind of stuff do not get the marblers but the other stuff will work just fine when it comes to these inclusions uh, yes do the bottom cure the bottom of your piece place the inclusion put some more resin on top of it and then once you cure it turn it again upside down and cure it because otherwise again you're going to be left with um quite a bit of uncured resin you can use them in casting resin without uh, any kind of problem and if we are talking about winter once again you can use all these um, transparent pigments that i'm showing here to to color or you can uh, just use the regular casting resin i know you have to wait for a longer time and uh, by the way here i also have uh, remember i showed you a while ago that there is also flexible uv resin i'm i also got some flexible casting resin i didn't get around to use that and to make a tutorial but i have it and um, generally speaking the one for this is the same kind of it's at the very end of the resins and this is the as you can see this one for example let's take this one this is the regular Chiao Chiao Chinese resin the one on the right and the one on the left is soft so whenever you want a soft UV resin make sure it says soft on it because it doesn't do the same thing remember I showed you when I was presenting these I showed you that the main uh, uh issue was on certain uh, deeper resin molds like the the tropical fish that i showed you that if you want to get all the details on the tails and all the stuff if you try to use regular hard uv resin you cannot take it out without breaking all those uh, fine details so you kind of need soft resin for that <coughs> <coughs> excuse me okay the next thing uh i had a lot of things about resin sorry a lot of questions about resin uh the other issue uh that i was asked the, it's a completely different brand toots there are several major um, polymer clay brands and they are let me try and find this I did make a tutorial a while ago on on the various types of polymer clay. Let me get you the link so you can see how to choose polymer clay depending on what you want to do. Okay. Yes, no no worries Elaine. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, so the next question was can you sand and polish resin 
Absolutely you can. And if you remember, I personally use that um, modified pedicure wand. And actually, let me give you once again the link to it. Because I have a I have an article on my website with links where to get everything that you need. And you can use the exact same modified pedicure one. No, I didn't. I will put it on my list. I will put it on my list right here. Give me just a minute. Magic, did you say thermochromic? I mean, I did use thermal, I mean, paint that was changing color by temperature before, but not this specific one. So I'll have to, to do so. <coughs> You can use the exact same uh, modified pedicure wand if you your hands don't allow you to, to do a lot of sanding. The thing is that what you have to keep in mind is that if you're polishing, um, sanding and polishing resin, you'll have to go to a very, very, very high grit. Uh, some of the um, little discs that I I give links to and they are in my Amazon influencer store let me uh, get it to show you give me just a second here sanding supplies uh, you see I, I put several of these uh, pedicure ones because the prices vary and sometimes some of them are cheaper some of them are more expensive right so you can see you can choose see which of them is the cheapest and get that one but see I have here several different uh, kits and on some of them as well as the hand uh, ones some of them go as high as 10,000 so what you need are two inch sanding discs hook and loop that's how they are called hook and loop so so this one goes to 2500 grits. Some of the ones that I've uh, put here, they have, you can choose the grid, they are not in kits. So these ones are 600, but let me get a, a kit actually. So these ones go up to 7000 which might work but your best bet is to have a 10,000 and again you go all the way up because uh, your thing is to uh, when you when you sand a resin the resin is going to show the sand uh, sanding uh, scratches you have to go to a super, 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 super high grit for those scratches not to look, uh, not to not to show. Uh, and another thing that I do, for once I get to the higher, higher grits, uh, what I use is, uh, because that's the most available silicone oil that I have in the house, I use a drop or two of clay softener. And it helps with, uh, you know, not showing any kind of but yes you can definitely uh, sand and buff resin with no problems if you have enough high grit uh, can I bake resin yes I uh, depends on the resin <laughs> because 
most resins will be affected by heat. Uh, they will get yellowed out. Um, especially the casting resin. I personally have not found yet a casting resin that will not get yellowed out by baking. Uh, some of them can get some of them can get cloudy uh, when it comes to the UV resin the only one that I can fully recommend uh, that you can bake is the Chinese resin that most of us buy all the time and Trish has it now in polyclay play but I'm going to if you ha don't know about it and you haven't purchased uh, one before, uh, this is it. This one, I know for a fact that you can bake it without a problem and it will, it will not yellow, it will not do anything, it will be just fine if you bake it. Um, and the other question that I keep getting all the time, my pieces get warped after I put UV resin on them. And you have two things here uh, that you can do. Um, number one, what you have to think that the UV resin and most of the resin that we use to put on top of the our pendants and stuff to bring more three dial 3d dimensionality to our pieces is self doming and that means that it kind of pulls on its edges to dome and the strongest of them that does that is the ultra dome uh, the next strongest is uh, Lisa Pavelka's magic gloss and uh, if you've used it uh, before any of these two you know that uh, most of the time you pull it all the way to the edge and then you put it in the UV lamp and then when you're done and you take it out of the UV lamp you notice that the edges are not to the edges of the pendant you have a now you have a millimeter and you have to put another coat uh, that is why the Tiao Tiao is not that bad but it will still warp your pendant if your pendant is not thick enough um, the best thing to do in order not to to warp uh, your pieces is do not use a thick layer from the very beginning a place like two thinner layers because each of them is going to to pull a little bit but not enough so if the if the layer is thin enough um then you won't have problems with the resin pulling too hard on the on the edges and uh, by the way because I'm still it's still on my wish list of doing uh, I got also the question about oh, whenever I use PBO pa paints and actually it's PBO PBO uh, not PBO because it's a French thing and it's got an accent uh, but uh, Pebeo paints are made to be used on resin, on metal, on glass, not on flexible plastic, which polymer clay is a flexible plastic, PVC. Um, so, it also because it's another one that pulls so if you do something with pebeo paints it's going to pull on your um uh whatchamacallit on your polymer clay pendant and then when you put resin on top of it it's going to pull even more so you're gonna get these little spoon like uh, pendants uh, what can you do to to make that not happen um place an armature and there are all kinds of metal meshes and um, other kind of you know metal uh, sheets that will uh, not uh, uh, let the whatever it is the self doming thing um, pull on the edges and warp your pendant 
uh, another question and I've been answering this question over and over and I'm going to answer it again because there's always new people who might not have watched what I said before uh, my UV resin is okay when I get it but then it gets too thick when I as I'm trying to work with it it starts getting too thick to to work with it and even in the bottle it gets too thick now there's the the main thing and then i'm going to put an addendum on that the main thing is that you're working with uv resin if you're working with uv resin in a room that's got during the day in a room that's got windows and you don't have those windows blocked by light blocking blinds and heavy curtains you have uv light in your room and as the uv light hits your resin it starts slowly slowly to cure it of course it's going to get viscous and thicker even in the bottle because as you get the bottle and you start pouring like this right uh there's going to be some light going in so it's going to thicken out your resin um and another thing is i've been seeing all these beautiful effects done with uh uv resin and i know that i'm working in a dark room and i know that but nevertheless my resin uh, looks too thick to do and i never get those effects that is because there are again if for the hard resin because we have the hard resin and we have the soft resin for the hard resin there are again two different let me get back to the resin to see if i have any here uh but there are two different kind of resins they are the high viscosity and they are the very low viscosity they are almost pure liquid uh, they don't have any kind of thickness to them and it will say I, I don't think i have any here but it will say on the bottle it will say on the bottle it if it is uh, if it doesn't say anything then you can bet it's a regular viscosity and then you want to look for a low viscosity resin if you want to do those specific effects and know that i know of i don't know any kind of thinner for resin sorry you know, I just know that you need to get a low viscosity uh, resin. Okay. Now, using mica powders and pigments on polymer clay, I get a... Uh, do I absolutely have... Is there any other way to fix the mica powder on the pigments on polymer clay? Because uh, I made some pieces and... I don't want to varnish them because once I, I tried and I varnished a, a few, they look cheesy. Well, it depends on, number one, it depends on what type of mica powder and what type of pigment you're using. Because most mica powders do, and pigments do not bond with a polymer clay. When something bonds with a polymer clay, once you bake it, you know through the process of baking because of the high temperature it's going to uh, bond with the polymer clay underneath and you don't have to do any kind of varnishing because generally we don't do varnishing just to make things shiny but we need to do varnishing sometimes in order to seal certain uh, surface treatments of the polymer clay so you want if you want to skip the varnishing or you want to not have a very shiny var varnishing uh, you can either from the very start use mica powders and pigment powders that bond and pigments not necessarily powder that bond with the polymer clay once you bake it for example when it comes to mica powders uh, there are a few that bond with the polymer clay like perfect pearls or uh, the metallic pearlescent pan pastels and some that do not like the pearlix or the um, uh, decorum 
uh, mica powders, those do not, and you have to seal them. You have to varnish them. Uh, your other thing is, if you absolutely do not have any kind of option outside of the of brands that uh, don't bond, but you still don't want the shiny look, then you can use the only two that I used with success are the crappy old style sculpy glaze in satin and uh, the other one is the golden varnish let me see because I should have some here in the store let's go to that varnishes the varnishing okay durable I know I have a ton of uh, stuff here you can imagine I spend a lot of time on this influencer store so yeah you find all kinds of glazes I did a while ago I did a, um, a tutorial on how to make your own shellac but see in the golden you have three kinds you have the gloss you have the satin but you also have the matte a uh, completely matte golden now what you need to keep in mind the other ones you can also find in matte uh, what you have to keep in mind though and it's an absolute uh, must whenever you have a varnish that's matte or satin you have to um, stir it very very strongly before using it because all those ingredients that make it non shiny are at the bottom so if you don't stir it very good it's gonna be shiny <laughs> so you have to be very very careful about that but uh, and uh, I, I talked about the mica powders but when it comes to pigments again there are pigments that uh, bond with the clay and pigments that do not bond, bind with the, uh, the clay like pan pastels as I said they do bind with the clay uh, then you have the um, Franco Garcia artisan powders that yeah they seem expensive because the only they come in fairly big containers but you use those for like forever and ever and ever and those actually adhere not just on polymer clay but also on resin and on wood and on paper and on all kinds of other stuff so it's up to you if if you don't have a lot of money and you're on a budget I would go with a lower quality non-bonding mica powder and stuff but invest in a good matte or uh, satin finish uh, lacquer because it's gonna last a long time I mean I have I, I prefer to use uh, the regular min wax or even barathane but the min wax is the one that I use the most and I can tell you I got a tiny tiny container you know those small containers at Lowe's they are like this big about uh, four years ago and I still have like one third of it so it takes a long 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 time to to finish it and it's a cheaper option than of course if you can afford and you make a budget and you get a color or two every month you can get a full uh, set of the pan pastels or the artisan the Franco Garcia or the um, perfect pearls or whatever but if you don't have that much money then the only thing in, you sh in which you should invest would be a good satin uh, lacquer and then you can get the cheapo cheapest uh, chalk pastels or whatever okay the next question is again on uh, what is the best varnishing solution 
Well, whatever your pocket allows you, because um, honestly, with the varnish, I can tell you what to avoid. Uh, generally, avoid the the shiny, glossy, scalpy glaze. But everything else. Don't go crazy buying all kinds of expensive varnishes where you have to go crazy on is buying a good paint brush. Paint brushes don't come cheap. And uh, once again, let me show you in the same place in the varnish thing. <coughs> Do not get a flat. So here's a painter with like gosh 50 years of experience painting when you want to put a glaze on something what you need is what's called a mop brush um, you look for a mop brush that's done your best bet is to have squirrel hair if not it can have mink um, there are a few with badger but these are the cheapest that I found for good quality and why is that because when you are um, applying the varnish when you're applying the varnish what you want to avoid is streaks and uh, you want to avoid also air bubbles what happens when you use a a flat paintbrush, especially one that doesn't have uh, very, very, very soft hairs, and they are uh, plasticky, they are artificial hair, they are not natural hairs, whenever you apply it, it's going to leave streaks. And also a flat brush doesn't hold a lot of liquid but the mop brushes they are practically watercolor uh, brushes number one they hold a lot of liquid and they allow it to come out uh, in a very very trickly you know a little by little so you won't have to lift your paint brush from the piece dip it again in varnish and then because that's when you gather um, air bubbles so when you have a mop paintbrush it's going to pick a ton of that varnish and then just leave it little by little on the surface that you're using it on and because the hairs are uh, soft and very thin like squirrel hairs they will not leave streaks the any varnish has a little bit of self leveling but not as much as a resin so that's what I'm saying you can use min wax you can use the cheapest varnish that works on always water-based never get anything that's not water-based because it's going to eat up and dissolve your polymer clay because something that's not water-based and especially something that would attack plastics remember polymer clay is a plastic um, but you can use the cheapest water-based a varnish and it's gonna look just fine as long as one thing that you need to be um, very careful with make sure that it's got its UV non-sensitive UV protected because otherwise uh, this kind of varnish when you wear it out in the Sun is going to yellow out and that's why <coughs> I'm not recommending the scalpy gloss that one yellows out but uh, min wax and varathane are just perfect you don't have to go you can get it at your uh, regular um, you know home improvement store and you have absolutely no problem oh we got two little trolls There we go. 
no more trolls. There we go. I got nothing better to do. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so what I was saying, you want something that is UV resistant, so it will not yellow out. And Minwax and Varathane, you find them at uh, your regular home improvement store, and you have absolutely no problem. So, <coughs> I know, right? Kind of like you, huh? No debunk. Okay. So, it's past an hour that I've been up. And I'm going to go see if I can start working on some stuff. And uh, I shall see you all tomorrow during the regular live. And we are going to make snowflakes. And remember, you know, I, you know very well that I hate uh, going on and on about money. But if you can afford, because it was very, very hard for me with uh, Finnegan's emergency, <sighs> emergency. Um, hospitalization if you can afford even five dollars would be very helpful and you can find I made a special post because I had a lot of issues with GoFundMe so I made a special post on my blog and you can go ahead and uh, help me there because yeah on the spot the next day I was able to get from one of those payday thingies loans but otherwise I'm gonna have to, have to I'm going to have to um, pay a lot of interest for it so if you can help me before the holidays with Finnegan's expenses I will be eternally grateful thank you so much Deb thank you all of you and I shall see you tomorrow we'll make snowflakes have a wonderful weekend. Mm, bye.